a look at MSU's Constitution Day celebration, next on Carpe Diem. Thank you for joining us as we reflect on MSU's 2013 Celebration of Constitution Day and we look ahead toward upcoming programming of the campus's American Democracy Project. I'm Todd Kelshaw, a faculty member of MSU's School of Communication and Media and a participant during the last decade in the campus's American Democracy Project. That's a set of initiatives that we'll be talking about during this program. But first, let's take a look at the Constitution Day celebration here at Montclair State University. Constitution Day, which we celebrate today, commemorates signing of the U.S. Constitution on September 17, 1787, by 40 men. The document they signed has provided the basis of this nation's governing principles for more than two centuries. But the Constitution is a living document interpreted by the courts and amended from time to time to reflect the development of society. America is about and stands for a lot of things. Of course, today is dedicated to celebrating the importance of educating each new generation of American citizens about one of the most important documents in our nation's history. And it may, may, well, may, may well be the most important legal document in the world. How perfect that we celebrate it with the swearing in of 39 new citizens from 22 different countries who are embracing it as their own. I hereby declare, I hereby declare that I will support and defend, support and defend the, Constitution and laws the Constitution and laws of the United States of America, of the United States of America against, all enemies, against all enemies, foreign and domestic. Julia Diaz. Maria Felipe de Sandoval. Ronald Jimenez Lopez. We are our people, and we have just today embraced some new people who will help us create the nation in the way hopefully that we would like it to be. So it's enormously significant. I'm proud to be a U.S. citizen. Uh, I'm proud to be in this country and uh, I take all the opportunities that I have and I will have, you know. My wife is American, my sons are American, so just part of the family. It's been a struggle. I came here as a teenager. I was 16 when I came here and basically being in a new country, not knowing anyone, just family members and, you know, regular everyday struggles, ups and downs, working, but being scared, living in fear, not knowing if you're going to be caught, if you're going to get deported. But I decided I'm going to take this, I'm going to take the chance. And I did. And thank God I'm here today. And I'm a citizen. Yes! <laughs> Joining me now are Siobhan Gaines, MSU's Director of Government Relations, Dr. Jack baldwin Leclerc, faculty member and chairperson of MSU's Department of Political Science and Law, as well as the chair of the American Democracy Project Steering Committee, and Dr. Rosemary Howell, MSU's Dean of Students and longstanding member of the American Democracy Project Steering Committee. Welcome. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Well, I think before we begin talking about some of the things we just saw and uh, what we did here at MSU, I think a good place to start would be to ask Siobhan about what in the world the, the Constitution 
Day is. It's a national initiative. What is it and why is it? The late Senator Robert Byrd uh, included the Citizenship Day as part of an ombudsman uh, fiscal bill in 2004. Uh, it was the U.S. Department of Education that applied to colleges and universities and any other institution of learning that they would have to recognize Citizenship Day, um, thus Constitution Day. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've been involved with this for a number of years here, right? We, we, we've done some interesting things. We have. Our first uh, Constitution Day celebration was when the National 9-11 flag was here on campus for a ceremonial stitch, uh, stitching ceremony where we had the opportunity to repair the flag. Uh, that flag will be at the National 9-11 Museum shortly when it uh, comes to New York, I think, next year. But um, we've had a celebratory uh, organized functions with the Constitution Day. Uh, recently, which you just saw, was the uh, Immigration Services Oath of Allegiance. Uh, that is our third time that we've had this on campus. It's a well-rounded uh, uh, celebration that the citizens of the, their old country now take their Oath of Allegiance as new citizens of the United States. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and for those of us who were there, this is certainly a moving uh, event, and I think it puts some things into perspective about the opportunities of citizenship as mm -hmm. well as the rights, uh, the, the responsibilities mm -hmm. that, that we have. Mm -hmm. yeah. And it yeah. also proves that this is still the land of opportunity, that people still come here with the hopes and the desire to have and live in a free democracy. Mm -hmm. Wonderful opportunity for our students to be involved in all of the celebrations, and so it was just quite exciting for them. It really strikes at the heart of what we do in political science and law. It's uh, really a living laboratory of what we teach and gives students the opportunity to see others uh, achieving their aspirations for American citizenship. Mm -hmm. You know, since we started working with the American Democracy Project, we've tried to enhance the awareness of civic engagement with our students. And certainly having the naturalization ceremony here and getting students involved in Constitution Days for the past several years, it's been a way to help them understand their role and responsibility in the civic uh, engagement part of their lives. Yeah. And so we've been pleased for their involvement. Terrific. Well, that naturalization ceremony marked really just the first part of what was a pretty rich day here at Montclair State yes. University. So following the naturalization ceremony, the afternoon showcased two panels. The first was a discussion among immigration attorneys that was moderated by Professor of Political Science and Law, Dr. Bridget Harrison. The second, uh, to which we're going to devote some special attention, was a panel moderated by Political Science and Law faculty member Dr. Ian Drake. And that featured MSU students Deborah Kubias, Camilla Kolonaskaya, Jonathan Mairano, and Melissa Zuniga. Let's take a look at what some of, uh, some of what the students had to say. The matter of immigrants, to me, an immigrant is someone who came here for a better opportunity and who most of the time struggle really hard to get used to the life here and um, find um, the better opportunities for themselves. So. Um, I would like to see positive changes regarding immigration reform in that aspect too. It's hard for, for uh, immigrants that are undocumented, they don't have a voice, they don't have a say. Um, for example, when many of um, undocumented immigrants, they graduate high school, they don't have the opportunity to apply for a good college, so they have other, they have a harder time assimilating, but as for me, my mom, she came beforehand and was able to kind of introduce me. I, I think that when they see like their children's success, like my sister just started college and I'm almost graduating, and they see their other children that they're on the road to success, they're still doing well in school, I think that they would think it was worth all their struggles. 
Rosemary, uh, as dean of students, you had a, a big hand in, in conceptualizing what this would be and interacting with the students as they thought about what they wanted to do. I wonder if you could tell us about how this came to be. Absolutely. I'm very pleased that the students were involved in the naming of their portion of the day, Trading Places, Changing Nations. Mm -hmm. And to them that signified a, 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 a deliberate uh, action by the students or in the cases or in some cases their families to actually trade the places come away from their home country to America for in many cases as they said during their their conversations a better life education and so although the students identified struggles and difficulties they ultimately said that it was well worth making that shift. And so I was very pleased that they were involved, not only in being on the panel and sharing their experiences, but also in just forming and conceptualizing that portion of the day. Right. It's interesting how many different challenges students mm -hmm. of, uh, who are immigrants or, or children of immigrant parents have in navigating entry into yes. an institution such as this. And I think it was very interesting for at least our students who were there in attendance, and it was a very well attended yes. session, to really get that perspective because we, I think we take for granted the kinds of privileges that we have in terms of entry into an institution like Montclair State University in terms of financial aid yes. and, and other means. And mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things that I'd like to add is because Montclair State University is such a diverse community, mm -hmm. students are accepted and we have such a, a myriad, a, 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 number of students from a variety of places and so coming here into a new land, a new place, uh, whether they came directly to the university or came to high school and then to the university, mm -hmm. they were well accepted and supported and we really are a richer community because of the culture and the experiences that they have brought to this university and to this country. Yeah, that's very true. You know, it's interesting, we're such a multinational campus. I. Uh, have students from all over the world from I can sometimes have students from th two or three continents in one mm -hmm. class mm -hmm. and yet I don't think we can really see into their souls and their lives the way we mm -hmm. we did the mm -hmm. the uh, during the Constitution Day when they spoke about um, how the experience of transitioning from where they came from mm -hmm. and acculturating and what it meant to them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And it reminds us too that the things that we do through the American Democracy Project initiatives is about the students, it's yes, about yes. student engagement, recognition of some of these issues yes. of citizenship. So Jack, I wonder if you could tell us a bit about what the American Democracy Project is as a national initiative and as well as the kinds of things that we do here. Well, it's a multi-institutional um, initiative that was uh, created in 2004 by the American Association of State Colleges and Universities. And it has a number of sub-initiatives. Constitution Day is just one of them. And the idea is to really engage students in uh, civic projects. Mm -hmm. And this is just one of, of many different projects that, that through which the uh, institution expresses itself. And the idea really is to give students a, a living learning laboratory uh, in understanding law, their place in society. And actually, the project is, is wonderful in that it helps us to focus on what's important in launching the next generation mm -hmm. of civic leaders. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm sure that as a, as a faculty member of political science and law, uh, these issues about political engagement, democratic engagement in a society such as ours are about a wide range of kinds of engagements. Um, deliberative kinds of engagements, um, engagements in one's community through service activities and so on, but also voting. Mm -hmm. And right now we're at a point in which we have a, a large number of things coming up with two elections that are, are quickly uh, approaching. I wonder what you can tell us about the kinds of things that we can look forward to at MSU this fall. Well, we have a number of different programs that uh, Siobhan has been spearheading. Mm -hmm. uh, we're bringing voting onto the campus, mm -hmm. and uh, that's a, a tremendous opportunity for students uh, to exercise the right that they read so much about and we, we tell them so important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we, of course, we have new polling places on campus as well, and this is a, this is a real big deal here at MSU, right? Um, we're very, very excited, and uh, we have to commend the students who did the work. Uh, we did maybe two years of ongoing uh, voter registration. Uh, we lobbied the Passaic County Election uh, Commission, uh, and we demonstrated that there was a need for our own voting district. We not only have polling sites, we are now in our own voting district. Mm -hmm. So we all need to uh, commend the work that our students have done. Mm -hmm. 
Um, we are the only campus in New Jersey that has a voting district with polling sites on campus. Um, we also have our students who are board workers. Mm -hmm. So they are now county officials. They get paid just like any other county uh, board worker would on election day. Mm -hmm. So it really shows that um, the engagement of our students, they want to be part of the voting process and, and it really works well. And when our students vote on Wednesday, uh, October 16th, they'll see students just like them mm -hmm. letting them sign the book and, and doing casting mm -hmm. their vote for whoever they, they choose to vote mm -hmm. for. So it's, it's a big uh, deal here on campus. Um, and, and not only that, we, we are in three surrounding towns. Mm -hmm. So um, our students, some are voting in Essex County, some are voting in Passaic County. And we have some students that may be able to vote in uh, Clifton local elections, mm -hmm. Little Fall local elections. So it gives them a, a, a well-rounded view mm -hmm. of, of the political process. Mm -hmm. And it gives them opportunities that not every college campus will be able to, to have. It's also informative about the logistical challenges of democracy of voting, right? When we're trying to navigate three different towns and yes. try to figure out how that's going to work. How did that play out? Well, it's, it's still, uh, we're still trying to tweak the process. Um, Bone Hall is now online again, so that is in Clifton. So our students who will uh, be voting on Wednesday, October 16th, and also November 5th, will be voting at uh, Clifton Public School number 16. Mm -hmm. So we will shuttle them over, uh, which we have done in the past, and uh, our students that reside in Freeman and Russ will be walking over with the president at the same polling site in Montclair at Bradford School. Oh, so we, we work uh, very well with student development and also res ed to, to ensure that our students have all the opportunities on election day to vote. So we're an official operating polling uh, place here on campus. We do have some of our residents that live on Clove and Long Hill Road that will be voting here at Machuga Heights as well. Right. That's exciting. Mm -hmm. and, and, and what have you seen going on with the student groups? Well, you know, it, it's, it's been a campus-wide effort and uh, I'm so pleased that so many of our students and particularly our Student Government Association, they've really taken the leadership and the charge to get the word out to help with voter registration. Mm -hmm. uh, a couple of weeks ago, uh, I and a number of other colleagues uh, went through the residence halls and we had voter registration applications that were incomplete, maybe an absence of a signature or something. And as we knocked on the doors and we identified the students, they were eager to complete the application so that they would be able to vote. So it's, it's, it's very exciting that our students are engaged, they see their responsibility, they've stepped forward, they want to be a part, they want to be involved in the planning of this, and so it's delightful that so many recognize their responsibility mm -hmm. in this area. That's terrific. The key to a dynamic campus, an engaged campus community. Yes, yes. Right. yes. Well, that we are. Our, our faculty and staff actually uh, in the past and whenever necessary accompany students to the voting sites to mm -hmm. help iron out any irregularities that uh -huh. might occur. Mm -hmm. And students get to uh, see how engaged the faculty and staff are mm -hmm. uh, in the process as well and how seriously we take the, uh, uh, the privilege of voting. Mm -hmm. You know, I think sometimes students complain that they don't see a relevancy in their courses. Yeah. And certainly that's not true. And we're just delighted that over the years, more students have become civic engagement minded. And so this is a great opportunity yeah. for our university. Yeah, and that brings up the important point about the American Democracy Project, that there's a real important basis for connecting what's going on in the classrooms, yes. the curricular dimension of learning, and the co-curricular dimension, their absolutely. experiences in their student groups, yes. outside the classroom, and their experience of learning. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. They're certainly involved civically on campus. I mean, our Student Government Association, the executive board, those students are elected into office, mm -hmm. and many of the other organizations. And we have approximately 100 other students organizations, their leaders there, and they believe in giving back to the community and, and working in the community. And so we're just really excited for the opportunity for them because we're preparing them for 
life after this undergraduate degree. <laughs> very, very, very true. Now, Siobhan, is there any information that you can provide that, that the viewers might, might need to know about this polling sites, uh, about how to go about registering, how to go about voting? Well, in New Jersey, uh, anyone who is 18 years old uh, or older and resides in New Jersey can register to vote. Uh, our students have an option. When you go to college and you reside on campus, you can use your college address as your primary address. Mm. So you can also vote or use that address to register to vote. So you have an option. What we did, with, since we have 5,000 students that are, reside on this campus, to offer them the opportunity to use their dorm address as their primary address. Mm -hmm. And that begun our aggressive campaign with voter registration. Mm -hmm. And it has grown into District 9 in Little Falls. And um, we're just very, very pleased that the students support it, the community has supported it so far. And um, again, we'll see what the results are on, on Wednesday because that will be our first full-blown voter registration yeah. process here on campus. Uh -huh. So let's talk about registration. Uh, how many students do this? For students that live on campus, if they have not already registered to vote, they simply have to go into the Center for Student Involvement, which is located on the first floor of the Student Center building. For commuter students that have not registered to vote, they just need to go to the Center for Student Involvement as well. And so we have the voter registration forms there, and we'll gladly have them fill it out so that they can register. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I have a question uh, for both of you, if, if you have mind. What do students do if they think they might have a problem with uh, making their registration effective uh, in, the, in, the, in the district? Is well, there any mechanism can, for that? They can check with their county clerk, which is in Passaic County, or they can just pretty much do a voter registration form over. On election day, if any of our students have any problems whatsoever, they can do a provisional ballot and our board workers there can advise them and instruct them and that board that provisional ballot will give them the opportunity to re-register once that vote is is casted in in the county system mm -hmm. that was an excellent question i'm so glad you asked that <laughs> because you. there may be many students that have a problem or something to be resolved mm -hmm. and they're not quite sure how to resolve it and we want every student every student at the university to be registered to vote. Mm -hmm. That is their responsibility. We've in the past, we've supplied from my department, many of us have multiple degrees, including law degrees, and we've accompanied students down to the polling places mm -hmm. to be a presence and to introduce mm -hmm. ourselves and make sure that uh, if there are our problems and we can be of service, we, uh, we certainly yeah. will offer our uh, assistance. And you had mentioned that before as well. What kinds of problems have you encountered in the past? Uh, well, and uh, let's, I don't know so much in terms of our, in, in, usually technical issues mostly, mm -hmm. but in other districts around the country, there have been some very severe problems, mm -hmm. uh, situations that, in which uh, there'll be two voting booths, uh, one, or maybe four voting booths, one, only one assigned to students, mm -hmm. and, the, and yes. where the process mm -hmm. takes forever, and where there'll be three for the local residents who shoot in and out with no problem. Mm -hmm. And so st the students actually uh, rallied to the, uh, uh, to, the, to, to the situation in, in most cases where they would wait hours and hours and hours to so? actually vote. Mm -hmm. But you can imagine the problem in some small voting districts mm -hmm. where the influx of, of students from a campus can overwhelm the electoral process. Mm -hmm. So a mayor who perhaps has been in, in office for 20 years can find himself suddenly out of office or herself out of office um, merely because uh, students decided one year they were going to vote in, in, a, in a presidential election year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In terms of the kinds of logistical issues for getting our new polling places on campus, do you foresee any kinds of problems? Have you seen any kind of glitches along the way in setting those up? Any kind of um, concerns among broader communities? We, we work closely with the Montclair State University Police mm -hmm. and they work closely with the Passaic County Sheriff's Office. So we will have law enforcement there um, as uh, Dr. LeClaire uh, stated that there are some technical issues. The machines may go down or the student's name may not be in the voting book. That's when we rely on some of the services of, of the legal uh, staff that we have uh, at Montclair State. So they will, can assist um, as, as well as the law, uh, election law enforcement staff that they have uh, on present. Mm -hmm. 
but the provisional ballot is is the cure. Uh, no one should be denied to vote by a provisional ballot, which is the paper ballot. And the bad word in the room here in New Jersey is voter ID. Mm -hmm. You do not have to show ID in the state of New Jersey. So no student IDs, no driver's license. It, we are still working on the honor system that you say who you are. And we, we honor that. And you can register to vote. So we don't want anyone to say to our students, you have to show ID. Mm -hmm. Well, for students to be able to be engaged in this on campus and to see the mechanics yes. of how voting works, it makes it very real. That's it makes yes. voting much less of an abstract thing, especially for those students who are voting for the first yes. time. Yes. Right? Yes. That's, a, that's, that's terrific. Well, thank you so much for your work, all thank of your you. individual involvements with these initiatives. I think we can look forward to a very exciting November yes. election season. Yes. Uh, and, uh, and, and, and getting the students to those polls. Um, yes. Well, I've enjoyed this discussion about MSU's 2013 Constitution Day um, and the American Democracy Project initiatives. And I thank our panelists, Siobhan Gaines, Dr. Jack baldwin Leclerc, and Dean Rosemary Howell for coming on the show. Now, if you'd like to learn more about these events or about any other Carpe Diem, you can write to us at the email address on your screen. That's carpe diem at mail.montclair.edu or call us at 973-655-5158. For Carpe Diem, I'm Todd Kelshaw. Thanks for watching. <laughs>